would say just a, a brief, a brief introduction, because there's lots more to go in depth in the topic of uh, devotions or home devotions or, or individual devotions, whatever you want to say it. But um, so I thought I'd just start us off with a, a brief, a brief introduction to this topic, and there's uh, lots more to come because of it. When, when we talk, we talked about this word sabbatical today a little bit. Uh, it's a very important word. It comes out of the third commandment and the understanding of uh, uh, God resting on the seventh day. Uh, the third commandment um, uh, has to do with worship, right? Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching or the word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. And as we realize, and I can go into a more in-depth study, but I won't, but just as a summary, we realize that that was a foreshadowing, that commandment specifically was a foreshadowing of Christ. Christ came to fulfill that one commandment in himself as he refers to himself as as the place to find rest. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you Sabbath. So we then realize that this Old Testament time of worship, collective worship, corporate worship, where they would stop working, the physical rest, and also the spiritual refreshment came on the last day of the week, Saturday. And then, of course, that habit tradition Christ called it a habit. He, it was his habit to go into the synagogue and teach, right? A very important word. He would, um, um, he would fulfill that commandment in himself when he rose from the dead. So the early apostles chose Sunday as the day of corporate worship because of the resurrection, Easter. That's why we worship on Sunday. So we gather together, we receive the sacrament, and as Acts 2.42 said, they gathered together, the early church, uh, to fellowship, to break bread, and, and the prayers. So that pattern was already set very early in the church. They continued the corporate worship, the day of rest, together on Sunday. It could be any day of the week. And so then you begin to think that uh, if, if resting in Christ is important, and feeding on the word is important. Why? Why do I just relegate it to one day out of the week? Yes, we stop working, and we, we have a six-day work week. But I think most of North America, most of the world, has a five-day work week, and you get what's called a weekend. We pastors don't know what a weekend is. <laughs> so Pastor Guy takes Monday off, and I take Friday off, and that's our day off of the week. And uh, and. Uh, and again, we have to watch our time and our devotion to our family and other things. Uh, we have no idea how Pastor Stubbe did it. We, we just, uh, we, we have no idea how he, he did this place just by himself. That's why I came. I said, you need help. And he said, yeah, he finally admitted he needed help, so they, they, you called me. So that's how that, that's how that happened. And, uh, but, uh, so if we are to find rest in Christ... And rest means the forgiveness of sins. We receive forgiveness and new life daily. That means this, this third commandment now applies to Christians daily because every day is the day of worship. Every day is a Sabbath, right? So this, this kind of opened the eyes to me to understand uh, when I started to go to college and seminary and I met my wife and we got married that... Um, she, she taught me a lot about what it means to find rest in Christ daily, that is to uh, enter into his word daily, to find rest for my soul, the Sabbath that I needed. Um, uh, eating is, is very comparable to studying scripture, uh, eating the word, digesting the word. And, and uh, most of us eat three square meals a day, correct? And, and, and that would make you think that if, if I went on a starvation diet, I'd get weaker. I'd eventually die. And so if the Word of God is like that, then if, if we 
deny ourselves this food, this spiritual food, we'll get weaker. Can we sustain our faith one day a week? Can I eat, can I eat a meal one day a week and remain strong? So th this is a comparison that we need to take to heart. Um, so I, I had to grow into this. I had to learn this myself. I'm going to be a pastor. I'm studying. And uh, my wife, who grew up uh, with, with a pastor's father, as a father, uh, this is how she grew up. They, they loved to sing, and they had devotions. And um, so she introduced it uh, to me, and uh, of course, she held me responsible to introduce it to my own children. So I give my wife all the credit uh, for this. Because she, she lived it, she grew up into it. I didn't. So this might be a familiar story to many of you, is you, you didn't grow up like this. Maybe you did. I don't want to um, uh, make any assumptions, but um, my parents went to church. The extent of my education was Sunday school and church. And then when I was 12, 13, I went to confirmation class. Uh, other than that, I, I did not study God's Word on a daily basis. It was just relegated to these days, right? So I, I look back on my life, and of course my parents were faithful, but they, they didn't know either. They, they were not given that example either. So uh, I'm not blaming my parents, and it's never about that. It's just, well, here's a new way to learn, really the old way to learn. So we'll, we'll talk a lot more about this uh, in, in family life ministry uh, topics. You know that psalm that we opened up with today? If you just read the next verse, verse 16, it caught my attention today. Uh, at verse 15, the last verse of our psalm, let death steal over them, let them go down to Sheol alive, for evil is in their dwelling place and in their heart. It's kind of a bad way to end. <laughs> and this is the gospel of the Lord. <laughs> Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. What? But then 16 says this. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I utter my complaint and moan, and he hears my voice. And then he goes on. Uh, that, 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 that's instructive. Uh, why did the psalmist kind of choose three days, three, three hours out of the day, or three times a day, to express his prayer or what he says his complaint to God? It's kind of like a, 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 a rhythm of eating. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right? And uh, when you're young, when you're 18 years old, a few snacks and maybe an extra meal in between. Uh, but th this got to be the thinking is that Martin, Martin Luther, after he got through his monkery and all his uh, uh, office hours, uh, every three hours to... Uh, recite the Psalms and pray, confess his sins, he uh, didn't get any sleep. He, he finally, as reading, reading the Bible, discovered this for himself. And we call it by these Latin terms, matins, vespers, and compline. It's in our hymnal. We, are, we, uh, we do matins service every Monday morning with our children for chapel. Uh, so matins means morning, vespers means early evening, compline means at the end of the day. So three times a day. Um, this is how I ordered my, my devotional time. Uh, the morning, first thing in the morning or when I get here, it's, it's myself. This is my own personal time of devotion is in the morning. Uh, I get up at 5 o'clock now. I'd rather not, I can't help it. I'm, I'm just awake at five. So usually the best time of the day to get stuff done, your, your mind is clear, you have a cup of coffee, you open your Bible, you pray. Or sometimes when I get to the study, uh, I'll do the same thing. 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, sometimes shorter. Time in the Word, right? Uh, Vespers, now early evening, this, this was with my family the kids were growing up, and this was right at, after dinner, we're still at the table. And the kids are there, we've just eaten, no one's scattered out yet. Nobody, nobody could move until we had the ending table prayer, oh give thanks unto the Lord. 
um, that, that was so important, an important ritual to keep everybody together. And so we had our books, we had our devotional materials, and it was just a logical thing. Right after dinner, when everybody's there, to have our devotions with our kids. Right. And then, just before bed, it was my wife. have a short devotion just before bed, and, um, um, uh, and then we do many things, many different things together. Uh, read through the Bible, of course. Uh, uh, we'd often pray the Lord's Prayer together, and then we'd go to sleep. Um, so that, that's how I set my schedule. That's how I set my day. Uh, myself, my family, my wife. Now, the kids are grown now. At 8.30 every night, we call up our son Luke on FaceTime. And we go through a devotion with him because he lives alone. And we want to still bring the word to our son uh, who's on his own now. So we, we have that connection about 8.30 every night with him. And uh, uh, but what, what's good is that um, uh, my, my children, for the most part, have set up their own what's called a family altar. And we never really had a, a sacred space in our house, what we call per se a family altar. It was the books were by the kitchen table. Uh, Joanne played the piano. We'd go near the piano and sing. But uh, Mark, I, I could draw it on the board. He, he has a little tiny altar with um, a, a missile stand. The Bible's on the missile stand. And he has two candles. And it's right in the living room against the wall. So it's, you walk to the front door, and, and there's, there's the family altar, a literal altar. And they have their devotions there every night. And they're teaching young Samuel uh, that this, this is we, we worship every day. We, we commit time to God and his word every day. And uh, uh, my other daughter, my oldest daughter, married to a pastor, their altar is actually right on their kitchen table against the wall. Where they also set up a candle and they have their books stacked. And as you do it every day, and if you forget one day, your, your little child will say, hey, we forgot the boat. Your children will say that. It's the ritual they become accustomed to. Right. And of course, at bedtime, we, we have it right by the bedstand of the Bible or a devotional book. And it's right there available to us. And uh, so th this is what I've learned. We've set it up. It's not always perfect. Uh, we might forget a day. We pick it up again the next day. But uh, uh, I realized the, the great value in, in doing this uh, for myself to find rest and Sabbath in Christ uh, every day. Uh, these are the three books that we get, we, we get to use. And uh, if, if you know me, I've talked about it before. But throughout your life, gentlemen, these are the three books that we study quite regularly. The Bible and the hymnal a small catechism. Uh, this usually is the first one a child's introduced to, and uh, when children are young, uh, they are to memorize the catechism and memorize scripture, which is what we're doing here in the school and uh, uh, the memory work that we're doing every week. Um, and I'm amazed at how, how fast the kids learn, and, and by, by the end of the week, they know their stuff pretty well. And, and why is that important? Because while they're young, they can memorize easily. And, and the words are being formed in their hearts and minds. The, these precious words of God are being formed in their hearts and minds. And that will stick with them the rest of their life. Uh, while they're young. The first six years of their life especially are very, very crucial uh, to, to doing this. So uh, the catechism, the Bible, and the hymnal. CPH has put out my first catechism, so what I always recommend is uh, use age-appropriate materials. Living as God's child, this is sections on baptism. It comes with pictures. Children love the pictures, and as they get older, there's less pictures and, and more words. I, I like the devotional books that, that have discussion questions and prayers listed, so so the, uh, the parents can pray, and they're listed in red. Uh, here's the hymn, my first hymnal. Here's the section on Lent. 
uh, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. And there are only two verses. Uh, it's helpful if someone can sing or play musical notes. But nowadays you can get MP3 players and, uh, D, uh, and, and CDs. And then my first Bible, again, age-appropriate materials to use. Short stories, Elijah, the prophets of Baal, Elijah goes to heaven, uh, Jesus feeds the 5,000, etc., etc. Now, if, if you go into my office, I have a whole lots of books for children, and we just set up our children's library, our youth library, uh, in, the, in the library by the doors. And uh, it's pretty well stacked right now, but these three books you can find in there. What about the portals of prayer? Well, we do use these, and they're available to everybody. And here, in every booklet, it gives the order of family worship. It designates a leader and the responder. So the leader begins in the invocation, and then the curie, and then the leader is to read a song, and all respond, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And it gives the scripture reading, brief meditation, and then the prayer, and those are all listed in the book. And so for the scripture readings, they're listed for you, and you actually take out your Bible, you read it from the Bible, and, uh, and then you read the meditation, and there's a very short prayer at the end, but we always pray the prayers at, at, for the day at the back. There's lots of prayers listed at the back, Friday evening, Saturday evening, and other things listed back there. So it's all set up for you, um, and then after the Lord's Prayer, then the leader says, let us bless the Lord, all say thanks be to God, and then finally, the Almighty and Merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Also listed in the front is Luther's morning prayer and Luther's evening prayer, already written out for you in this little book. Um, it even mentions that David has mealtime blessings and uh, a returning of thanks after also written now. So time, time to say grace and, and uh, thanks is Thanksgiving. So they did these well. Uh, uh, there's actually some quite good devotions in there. Um, and and uh, we, we appreciate that little book from time to time. So again, these three books are the ones that we study. We learn our whole life. Uh, we learn to memorize these things uh, and we use them uh, until our last day on earth. Uh, there, there's other books. The other books that are written um, will, will help you reflect these three books in some way. Right? But, but these are the tools God has given us uh, uh, through the writings of many, many others to help us uh, find Sabbath and rest in Christ uh, that way. So, um, again, a brief introduction. I always tell people, just get started. And whether you're married or not, or whether you have a family or not, uh, whether you're single, uh, we can all do this daily. And I've always advised, just get started, do it once a day. You know, take five minutes, maybe ten, and just uh, 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 crack open these books. Now, you know, we, we have uh, the Treasury of uh, Daily Prayer, we use that a lot, you've heard of that. Uh, Luther on the Psalms that we use this morning is, there are tons, tons of, multi of, of books for devotion. Some are even spelled out per day and have dates on them. Uh, when my niece got married, what do you think we bought for them for their wedding gift? A toaster, <laughs> waffle iron, a broom and dustpan. No, we, we have always bought, anybody that I've married, we've always purchased a devotional book with, with a candle and a stand. start off your marriage. We hope they use them. Um, you know, what, what I should say, what I should say, uh, call them later, a year later, on their anniversary and say, hey, did, did you get the $500 that we sent you? <laughs> what, what $500, Uncle Gary? The one I put in your devotional book? <laughs> 
No, I don't, I don't think that's me. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, but uh, th this is the habitus, this is the ritual, the traditions that, that, uh, that have come into my family, mostly because of my wife and, and how she was brought up. And uh, I, I don't know if any of you would share your experience. Uh, you don't have to if anybody speaks up and says, uh, we struggle with this, uh, we did this in our family, uh, this is what I use, this is what we do. Please, please speak up and, and let us know. Um, where you're at with this. David. Um, we don't, we use the uh, higher things, higher things sends out a regular. Because of the age of your children. Yes. Right. Yeah. They're at that age now. Yeah. Yep. So they're all in, you know, or in a confirmation class or post or, okay. you know, so it's all related. Usually right before bed. So right before bed. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Darren. Um, we we utilize the uh, the invocation, um, and then we use one of the, the readings from the previous Sunday. Yeah. Um, usually it seems like there's a night or two a week, but for whatever reason we can't get to it. Do it after. It's a discussion question or two that can be added every week. They help, help discuss the faith, right? Talk about it at home. So, anybody else? Like Andrew? Yeah, I, I guess I would say for our family, um, probably two years ago when we got the girls out of public school and went into Lutheran school, just following catechesis, I mean, it's kind of derived how we do it. And Heather and I both had busy lives. Like, was working 60, 70 hours a week. She was a nurse and crazy hours. So um, a lot of our time at home was we get home. There's always a family meal, no phones, you know, typical Lutheran prayers, um, come Lord Jesus. Uh, just like I was raised um, during Advent, you know, getting the wreath out, the wreath out. doing the Advent calendar. Um, and then every night was just evening prayers, you know, our Father. And, but I would say probably catechesis and the learn by heart and just I think the structure of the school provides you right. and trying to bring that back in the house and, and reinforce right. that has kind of been good our guiding light. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, there, we really there's so much we can teach them at home and uh, teach them the liturgy, teach them the hymns and repetition and uh, uh, there's just so much to teach that uh, as pastors we know we cannot teach it all. It's impossible as pastors to teach everything they need to know. So we rely on you guys. We rely on the fathers. And that's why it's kind of a revelation. That, and your, your 
your children, a lot of them are grown up now, and maybe you missed out. And you look back and say, yeah, we didn't do that. I could have done that, and we just didn't. And, uh, uh, well, you have grandchildren, great-grandchildren. You're still an influence in your children's lives in many ways, too. So, Rick? Yeah, I printed out, um, put on paper the uh, Luther's morning prayer, and with the Apostles' Creed, and I did the same thing, Apostles' Creed with the evening, or night prayer, yeah. Luther's prayer, and I put it on the mirrors inside the bathrooms. So the kids are brushing their teeth, they can read those before they go to bed and when they wake up. Yeah. Just to get them in the habit of wearing it. Yeah. What's the rule about brushing your teeth? Uh, you sing through Jesus loves me twice. That's how much time they need to brush their teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody told me that once. teach, I think would also expound. If you're going to read a Bible text to your family, how do you ask questions that are pertinent to get to the answers of what the text is teaching? So is part of devotion also instructing in a way to ask your children questions that sort of forces them to look at the Bible text and start thinking about answers? To me, that's like a, a pedagogical approach to it. Um, some of our devotions are reading what Luther wrote. But then I think there's a time where we have to venture out also and say, what, through these questions, who, what, where, when, and why, what can we ascertain from that? And when you hear this Bible text, is there another text that you think of and want to bring it in and talk about it? So it sort of expands your ability to read and learn the word yourself and then pass that along to your children as well. I'm just thinking, I, Sometimes if we don't talk about that way of doing it, uh, we have the good materials, we have that. Uh, but I'm wondering if there's a way of, I'm still exploring, how do I ask questions that my kids can kind of get to the right. answers they should get to? That, that's, that's what I mentioned is yeah. the challenge of uh, uh, age-appropriate age questions, right. one or two of them to, to discuss what you just read. And, uh, So taking faith home is, is uh, and, and they're all downloadable. It's very excellent. Uh, it goes off the readings of the week, and you continue that discussion for the rest of the week from Sunday. And uh, there was always good discussion questions and prayers listed. And they also had um, service suggestions for service. Uh, how you as a family can uh, uh, look out towards others and serve others. And it's not just about not just about learning the word, but doing the word and, and uh, serving others as they learn that. So, so yeah, we, we're, there's lots to expand upon what we're doing today. Okay, anybody else? Thank you. Yes, Jim? When my daughter was uh, in catechism, I was helping out with the classes. What 
I would do is I would write up about 10 questions and then they would have to be multiple choice. There would be one I would answer, there would be, there would be another one that was really close, but it was not quite right. Yeah. And then, you know, the other two were really wrong and maybe wrong. Yeah. And so you could discuss, you know, get the discussion among the group on that. And you know, it always had to do with what was going on at that time. And it, I think it helped a lot to, to, to narrow in on what was really being taught and what was not being taught. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, we, we talk about example and modeling. Um, like my father uh, went to church. He was an elder, one of the elders. But, but I never remembered him ever reading the Bible or praying. Never, never remembered that. Uh, so I, I wasn't, that wasn't a model for me. Of course, I don't think it was modeled for him. Just let's go all the way back to Adam, you know, and, and look at that. So, uh, so they are watching you, and that, that's the hard thing to realize with our kids, uh, even our wives. Uh, so what are you going to do? I mean, you're going to go home tonight and say, "Honey, I think it's time we start devotions." Uh, here's the portals of prayer. How about we do this tonight together? You know, and it has a date in here, September. Uh, you know, what's what's today? September twenty second, first day. Third. Is it the third? Yeah. yeah. So this is the first, the first official day of fall. So here's the first day of autumn. Let's get a new start, new quarter, and uh, painted with mercy. Psalm fifty one, uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter twenty twelve. And then pray, pray Saturday night's prayer, and and then with the Lord's prayer together. So that that'll take you maybe five minutes, but get you back into the Word again every day. If you miss next day, or if you make, miss the day next week, just get back into it. And, uh, or you just develop this rhythm and pattern over time, and then you realize you really miss it. You know, you really miss it. Um, so just start simply. You got to start. Just start simply. That's all. You just start. Even if you pray the Lord's Prayer with your wife before you go to bed, that's that's the start. Honey, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer before we go to sleep. That's all you do. <laughs> and she'll say, wow, I really love that man up stuff. <laughs> I've heard that from wives. My, my husband's different. I've heard this, guys. My, my husband's changed a little bit. I'm not sure. Is that that man up that that thing's going to? I'll say, yeah, probably. He learned some things at Mando. Yeah. But he, he started to pray. I never saw him do that before. So, well, thanks be to God. <laughs> All right, anybody else before we end depart for, for today? Just a just an introduction. There's so much more to study and talk about in this area. And uh, just to scratch the surface today. But, uh, Pastor, do you have a closing? I was hoping.